Right. <clears throat> Good morning, January 7th, 2021, year of our Lord. This is Justin William Savoy. And um, this morning, I'd like to take a look at this book here. It is George Donatus, director of the Acropolis, general editor of Antiques, the Acropolis, and its museum. English edition. Let's see here. So, uh, if I look on the, here's the back. This is where I got it from. I get a lot of books from them, and I let them know before in the past I do review materials. And if you're in this area, and you ever get a chance to go there in Ashland, I ask that you would support them. It's a non-profit media exchange, so keep that going. So here's this fellow here. He's George Dantas, author of this guide, is General F4 of Antiques and Director of the Acropolis. He studied archaeology in Athens and Munich and was made doctor of the University of Athens with his study figures of seated intellectual men and in ancient Greek art. He has written numerous archaeological articles related to ancient Greek sculpture, in particular portraiture. He has also served as the Epimelite and Ephor of Antiques in Rhodes and Corfu, where he conducted many excavations. These are pretty cool little additions. I would love to find more of them. And you'll have to forgive me, but this morning I'm going to be drinking my coffee um, as I am waking up. So you'll just have to deal with that. I'm having a little bit of a hard time waking up, but I decided to go forward with it and make this video. Um, George Dantas, General E4 of Antiques and Director of the Acropolis, is a distinguished archaeologist. In his guide to the monuments of the Acropolis, he gives a full picture of the National Sanctuary of Athens and examines archaeologically, historically, and aesthetically this complex monument which constitutes the highest measure of Greek classical art for Western civilization. The elegant text is accompanied by rich color il illustrations and valid reconstructions. The archaeologist Ngaleki Charitonadu is the author of this new guide to the Epidaurus, which is based on the most recent archaeological research and personal study of the sanctuary, richly illustrated with helpful architecture plans and lovely valid reconstructions. It constitutes an essential aid for whoever visits the renowned sanctuary of Asclepi Asclepios in extensive introduction, the history of the sanctuary, and the worship of the healer god Asclepios are described. Delphi, the basil Petrakos, former ephor of antiques at Delphi and now Attica, is the most valid guide to the great Panhellenic Sanctuary. It summarizes the most recent progress of archaeological research into its monuments in an elegant manner and gives for the first time a full picture of the works of art exhibited in the museum there. The history of the sanctuary, the worship of Apollo, and the ritual of the oracular responses are also described in separate chapters. <clears throat> A lot of this, I'm probably going to show you some of the artwork there as I drink coffee and just allow for you to look and absorb this wonderful sights. And contemplate some of the classical artworks of antiquity. A panoramic view of Acropolis from the Southwest, the Pantheon stands in the center to the Acropolis from the west. One sees it beyond the pines and cypresses of the hill Philopapos. A further close-up view of the west side of the Acropolis complex of the Propylia 
Leia, from which the little Nike temple, which now be clearly distinguished to the right on top of its tower and at the left edge of the right tower of the late Roman Bele Gate. Bule, Bole. The Parthenon, Parthenon, from the northwest, a Greek strong feeling for plasticity, which is also expressed in the architecture, has achieved in the Parthenon an admirable harmony of corporality and elasticity, of majestic simplicity and lightness. It's been a long time since I've been into checking out the Greek stuff, like architecture and art and everything. I mean, I've always liked that, and I'll read books that have some of that in them, but it's been a long time since I really attempted to, like, contemplate and really study and look into and learn more about. I mean, you know, if it comes up in my readings as I'm going, which often it does, then that's fine. But uh, it's been a long time since I really took a good look. So this is kind of fun for me. Uh, plan of the Acropolis and immediate environs. So here's all the different things that are inside there. Travelist legend one approach of classical times to pedestal of Agrippa earlier of Eumenides. Propylaia, Nike Temple, Brauronion, Catholici, Parthenon, Temple of Roma and Augustus, Sanctuary of Pandion, Sanctuary of Zeus, Polius, Altar of Athena, Erechtheion, Pandrosion, Arephorion, Statue of Athena, Promachos, Clepsydra, Penantheniac Way, Odeon of Herod, Atticus, Stoa of Eumenides, Esculapion, Theater of Dionysos, later Temple of Dionysos, Odeon of Pericles. Pretty sweet little picture. Entire west front of Acropolis, part of the west facade of Praleia and Nike Temple of its tower, section of the Propylaea and east wall of the so called Pinacotikia. The protruding knobs uh, are ancient. The beam rests and the openings derived from the Frankish works when the building served as a palace of overlords. <clears throat> Reconstruction plan of the Borinan first phase after Stevens. <sighs> the Nike Temple from the East, reconstruction plan of the Nike Temple. The upper part of the east face of the Nike Temple, the Fries, is original, southwest corner of the Parthenon, with only the Mitofe, Mitofe preserved in situ on the south side. <clears throat>
the superb head of a horse of Selene's chariot at the north end of the east pediment of the Parthenon British Museum, slab from the frieze of the Parthenon Young Horsemen British Museum, slab from the north frieze, frieze of the Parthenon Youth Ready to Mount British Museum. I should probably work on my Greek pronunciations. I don't know. I'm not really... I'm doing that now because I'm going to be going through uh, Plato, but I'm not really so great at it. <laughs> I've been at some monasteries before where the Greek uh, monks there have corrected me on my punctuations in a humble way, though. I'm not in like some kind of arrogant way or whatever, which is nice because then it sticks, you know? It's not so... If you're like at university or something and someone corrects you and they have the right pronunciation, I would never really be embarrassed or humiliated. I mean, they do it to be like a jerk, and that's one thing, but when they do it, uh, it always sticks with you after that. I remember that when I was learning German, uh, that would happen, and I'd never forget, especially when you're doing like dissert dissertations and stuff, and I don't know. <laughs> Here's that. Statue of Athena. Pretty extensive write-ups on all of the different galleries. Very nice. I'm pretty stoked to have this book. I used to have a lot of stuff like this in the um, past, and then unfortunately most of my library was lost to me. So, you know, and it's hard to have, like right now I'm kind of struggling with that. It's like kind of of a covetous thing of myself that I really shouldn't be doing, but I'm like wanting to acquire into myself new books. I know that that won't really make me happy, like gaining of things, like never really does that for you. Um, however, I do love to surround myself with books and, you know, like I have done a lot of dense reading during my education. Prior to my education, I was very autodidactic and self-taught, and I continue to have that in my life, like a love for reading. But now I'm much more of like a bookseller friend of mine. Um, he owned a hermetic bookshop and like esoteric, sold esoteric and religious and philosophical and alchemy books and interesting things like that. He always said that he was a dipper, like, it's nice to have a bunch of tactile books around you and then um, be able to, like, man, can you see, like, those, you know, I think of those paintings of Christ with the lamb around his neck. Um, very interesting. Sacrificial calf to Athena. Moscophoros, Statue of the Patriot. 
Romvos from the inscription on the base who offers sacrificial cap to Athena. 570 BC. Um, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, so being like a dipper, like having tactile books around yourself and instead of going to your search engine of choice and putting something in and having it pop up on your screen and be able to see that, that's, that's very nice and very convenient. But I actually remember at university when we would have to really like get interlibrary loans and and um, get piles of books, carry piles of books. I know I'm dating myself by saying that. I mean, I'm 45 years old. But, you know, I was kind of, like, always taken by that. There's some ability to kind of romanticize that. And uh, I don't know. There's something mystical and, like, somewhat, like, magical or very amazing about that kind of experience. Um, and... I miss that somewhat. So I love that before I had a house with a couple, like a two-story house full of books. I've had my own personal little libraries or studies, which my father-in-law at the time had moved into, which was kind of convenient for him, but I kind of had to give up my study, but I still have my books in a central location. And it's nice to have them because then you want to reference something, you can just go and dig out a volume and, uh, reference it. I don't know. There's just something to say about the actual tactile. Like people have spoken of emptying out libraries and just putting a bunch of computer consoles in there for research. I think that's a shame. You know, I miss where I live here right now in the town I live in. There was an old library that closed down, man. And I miss that place. It smelled like pee and like burnt coffee. And a lot of the homeless community would go in there. And like, you know, you always had to be respectful to be there. So they'd be in there like reading and researching and staying warm. I thought that was just really super cool. And I just love to walk downtown and go into that place. And then they built a real big library that was part of a junior college and um, university here. And it's cool and I like it. And there's little corners and nooks, but it doesn't have that cozy feeling. That old place was full of like dusty old books. And like I said, it smelled kind of weird in there. And um, you could like hole up in a little enclave. Like I'd have little areas and pile the books in. I mean... That's gone, so I do like wax nostalgic about it because I miss that kind of experience. So I think I'm going to try to recreate that in the pseudo hermitage here where I'm hiding out and weathering this storm of COVID weirdness. And I mean, to be honest, for me, I think a lot of that is just wanting to stay away from a world that's seemingly getting more and more insane. And losing touch um, due to this like real postmodern, strange, modernist approach to life, hard materialist approach, lack of spiritual. You know, there is a thin, maybe spirituality or new age spirituality and other strangeness going on, but it's not quite the same. Um, so. I really just like like a lot of those old ways. I like to read books about reading books and about authors and scholars. And I do watch on YouTube. I spend the majority of my time like watching like not even documentaries. Like I can't handle a lot of like History Channel documentaries. They're just like lame. But there are some good older documentaries and author interviews. And I like to read books about authors and reading and, you know, like before I watch some interesting um, interviews and um, you learn a lot there and you learn, like I love to learn about their lives with books and um, I don't know, that's just like a big part of the person that I am. I don't know, I'm thinking even about, like, I like vinyl, but, like, records, it became this, like, elitist pursuit with vinyl as well, and so, like, now I'm thinking maybe, like, I don't know, CDs, I've never been, I mean, I've had tons of CDs throughout my life, but I've just never been a huge CD fan, and I've had a lot good record collections, like, I had a good, like, punk and hardcore and, uh, like, British Trojan uh, reggae and... Whatnot um, collection. Oh, Northern Soul and Oldies. 
vinyl and I sold all that in a time of like desperation and regretted I sold like a huge like vintage like really awesome independent comic collection a lot of artists who went on to do big things later on um I don't know and I like having the the tactile stuff again like I said the digital is not the same I'm thinking perhaps I mean you know CD is maybe digitally recorded but I don't know I and I like cassettes I like cassette tapes a lot and like cassette culture but like hipsterism has made all these things like pricey hobbies to have when you used to be able to just get a bunch of cassette tapes for like dirt cheap um but yeah, yeah, I used to listen to a lot of classical on cassette, actually, <laughs> which is kind of like uber nerddom, but uh, I enjoy that a lot, and like learning actual musical pieces, I'm going to do like a little thing on music here, and um, talk somewhat about that sometime very soon in the future, all the hobbies of the introvert, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, I hope you guys like this, taking a look at this. This is kind of a fun way for me to, like, wipe the sleepy out of my eyes and, like, wake up and behold some things, contemplate some things of uh, meaning. From the Peripatet of Nikkei Temple, Nikkei leading an ox for sacrifice, 415, 410 B.C., from the parapet of the Nikkei Temple, Nikkei unloosing her sandal, had of uh, okay, so this these are the previous ones here that we had already looked at. Head of the Neoplatonic philosopher, fifth century AD. It's like a kind of famous one in some circles that I go and I like to enjoy, really enjoy reading. Neoplatonic philosophy. I remember at a time there was this really sweet book, um, Clement of Alexandria and the Neoplatonic um, philosophers, and also discussed a lot of like Vedic and uh, Indian uh, philosophy and Neoplatonism. <clears throat> Just bearded. <laughs> A uh, new series of books describing the monuments and museums of Greece written by distinguished archaeologists and based on the latest archaeological research. And these are described the most significant Greek archaeological sites and their museums with such clarity and methodology, methodically, methodically, that even when the reader is far from the place, he is able to synthesize a picture of it. And in this, he is helped by the numerous plans and admirable reconstruction works of exceptional artists and architects, color photographs by the best Greek photographers complete these unique in scholarly and artistic quality editions, which are available in Greek, French, English, German, and Italian. Sweet. I'd love to get my hands on some of these other ones here. <clears throat> Well-known editor of texts and of ancient traveler Pausanias, Professor Nikos Papachatsis, the author of the new guide to the Argolid, with his profound knowledge, he guides us round this the richest in ancient memories region of Greece and recounts for us its myth and history, Messene, Tyrans, Herian. Of Argos, Epididorus are the major archaeological centers which are described in this work. There are also chapters of Nophilon, Argos, Asine, Lerna, and Troezen. Rhodes, the island of the Knights of St. John, is described in this new guide in its various chapters. The island history of expounded the top topography of Rhodes of La Lalisos and Chimeros and Lindos and the wonderful medieval monument of the island's capital roads are described. Color photographs and reconstructions are well as a special chapter on cultural life and art in the ancient roads. Complete this book and endow it with the special significance. <clears throat> The Guide to the National Museum is written by Basel Pentrakos, the ephor of Antiqu Antiquities in Attica, 
The most important archaeological treasures on display are described in the text. The description follows the chronological order of the exhibition. There is, however, an introductory note for every unity that helps the visitor view classical masterpieces in their cultural and historical setting. In a special chapter, the political and cultural events in ancient Greece are also examined. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so pretty awesome. I'm glad I stumbled upon this. I think I was like looking in an art section or something and came upon this, and I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, so this is Justin Williams Savoy. Uh, as always, you can reach me at SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com. Uh, you can ask me questions um, or um, choose to possibly support the channel. Uh, I'm going to keep on uploading this material for you guys, and I hope that you're really enjoying it. If you know anyone that enjoy this kind of content, uh, pass it on. I really try to keep that vibe of like just very personable and down to earth and, and nothing like overly polished or fancy. I just want to keep it really kind of real. And I thank you guys for watching this stuff and it kind of motivates me to like look into and practice. And you know, normally I know like in the ancient world they read out loud, but I don't really like to do that. I'm kind of like read to myself quietly type of person. Um, however, this has been good for me to talk about this stuff and to read out loud. And I hope that you're enjoying it as well. Okay, this is Justin Williams Savoy. Until next time, take care. Goodbye.